Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the full speed RC leader 2.5 inch micro FEV racer. In this video I'm going to go over its features, set it up and then head the doors and test it out. The leader 2.5 is available in two versions. You can get a standard version or the special edition. The only difference between the two is that the special edition version comes with this high quality 3D printed TPU part that will help you to protect the inner parts of the quadcopter in addition, it features a shock fin on top, which should help you to recover the quadcopter after a crash using turtle mode. In addition, you can choose between a binding fly version, which comes with either a Frosky, DSMX or FlySky compatible receivers, and a plug and play version, which doesn't come with any receiver and costs $5 less. Inside the box, you can find the quadcopter, a set of 25-35 propellers, a bag with screws for mounting the propellers and Velcro stickers, a battery velcro strap and if you've got the special edition version you can also find the canopy which I showed you before which is by the way available in a couple of colors. In terms of components the leader 2.5 is using 1106 7500 kV motors which supports 2 and 3 S lighter batteries. The bottom board on this all-in-one stack is a 28 ampere 4-in-1 BLLES ESC. It can handle between 2 to 4 S lighter batteries so the limitation of using this quadcopter with 4 S lighter batteries is the motors. On the center we can find an F3 flight controller that supports OSD and comes pre-flashed with Betaflight 3.3.0 and on the top the FSD TX648 channels VTX, it features smart audio and has a selectable output strength of 25, 100, 200, 400 and 600 millivolts. By default it comes locked so if you want to unlock it you will have to press this button for 20 seconds and then the locked channels are going to be unlocked and you will also be able to set the output strength to more than 25 mW. The micro FEV camera is the Cadix Micro F2 which I have yet to try. Next to the camera we can find an FRSky D8 compatible receiver since this is the Bun and Fly FRSky version. And finally on the back of the quadcopter we can find an LED unit next to a pretty strong buzzer and an XT30 battery connector which is secured to the quadcopter using the spacer. However, in my opinion, if you want to be on the safe side, you should secure it using a zip tie to the frame in order to prevent the battery pads from getting ripped off in case of a crash. Besides securing the battery leads, it's also recommended to secure the wires of the motors. As you can see, they are pretty loose and can get into the propellers. So what I recommend to do is to secure the wires on each arm, either by using an adhesive tapes or some zip ties. In terms of dimensions, the thickness of the unibody button plate is 3 mm. The thickness of the side plates is 2 mm, the wheelbase is about 118 mm, the distance between the back motors and the front ones is about 75 mm, and the distance between the right motors and the left motors is about 95 mm. The weight of the little 2.5 not including the propellers is 77.3 grams. After adding the included propellers, the weight is 81.3 grams. The weight including the 3D printed canopy is 88.3 grams. And finally, the total weight after adding the battery velcro strap is 90.8 grams. In order to bind the Sky version, put your Sky transmitter on mode D8, then hit bind, and power the leader 2.5 while pressing the bind button of the receiver, which is located over here. After a successful bind, you're going to get the RSSI of the receiver on your transmitter, and in addition, the RSSI is going to be outputted on Auxiliary 5 and you can choose it as a source in order to display the RSSI on the OSD. The next thing I'm going to do is to go over Betaflight configuration, then I'm going to put on the canopy and head outdoors and test the little 2.5 with 2 and 3S type of batteries. In addition, as for propellers, I'm going to use the Emacs Even Rush 2.5 props and not the included 2535 props because anyway, you're only getting a single set and you're going to need to get more propellers and I think that the Emacs Even Rush 2.5 props is an excellent option since these are pretty durable and also high quality propellers and I also really like their performance when I tested them with the Emacs Baby Hawk R Pro. So I hope you will enjoy the rest of this video and I'll see you in the end of it in order to give you my conclusion.
So overall, after testing the Leader 2.5, I can tell you that this is a pretty agile and fast quadcopter. It is well tuned and I like its performance both on 2S and 3S type of batteries. However, it does have some issues. First of all, the FRSky compatible receiver didn't perform that great and I got lots of low RSSI warnings. I can estimate that its range is only about 150 meters or even less than that and my advice is to get the plug and play version and get an FRSky ArcSAR receiver, of course if you have an FRSky transmitter. Another issue is that in my opinion the motors are not protected enough and on my last crash I broke one of the magnets inside this motor and it is no longer functional so I'm going to need to get a new motor and I recommend to get an extra motor because this thing can happen to you. These motors are not very expensive and replacing them is very easy so make sure to get an extra motor and another thing you need to do is to get some 3D printed TPU guards for the motors because if you're going to add them it's going to protect the motors and prevent such things from happening. Finally, if you're debating whether to get the Emacs Baby Oak R Pro or the Leader 2.5, I think that these are very similar quadcopters. You can see that also they weigh pretty much the same. The Baby Hawk R Pro weighs 90.9 grams and the Leader 2.5 weighs 90.9 grams as well with this broken propeller, so maybe it weighs just one gram more. But overall, the performance is very similar. I think that the range that you can get with their VTX is also very similar. Both are using Cadex cameras, however the Baby Oak R Pro comes with a CCD camera and the Leader 2.5 is using a CMOS camera. And this is a matter of personal preference, some users prefer CMOS cameras and some prefer CCD. In my experience, even though I only flown the Leader 2.5 for 7 packs since I crashed it, I can tell you that the flight times are a little bit shorter on the Leader 2.5 comparing to the Baby Oak R Pro using the same propellers. And I got about 2 minutes of flight time using a 550mAh 3S type of batteries and almost the same flight time using a 600mAh 2S type of batteries and I think that these two batteries are the recommended ones to this quadcopter. It can also fly it with 650 3S type of batteries but I think that it's going to be a little bit too heavy for this quadcopter. Finally I recommend to get a different battery velcro strap because the included one is just too big. I have a very good experience using this one from RJX Hobby for micro quadcopters. This is a very durable battery velcro strap and in general RJX are making excellent battery velcro straps so you should definitely check it out. Normally when I'm mounting batteries on the bottom of a micro quadcopter I'm using a dual lock sticker and then I'm putting another dual lock sticker on the battery in order to make sure it's going to stay in its position. However, just by using this battery velcro strap, the battery is pretty well secured and it's going to keep the battery in its position during the flight. As always, I thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions about the Leader 2.5, feel free to ask it in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell if you're not already subscribed. See you in my next videos and goodbye.